Yeah, um, I'm going to attempt to do something that's quite unusual in local government and not use an acronym during this speech. Right? So, so please pick me up in the right way. Uh, rather than using houses of multiple occupation, I'm just going to call them shared housing because that's what I was using when I was here and what young professionals use and what um, the people in this city use. They don't call it HMOs. Uh, it's just sharing a house with your friends. Now, Cambridge is a successful city. It has a thriving economy. Uh, the Centre for Cities report in 2012 um, showed uh, how great the economy is here in Cambridge compared to many other places. Um, job seekers allowance is the lowest in the country. Uh, the youth claimant rent is the lowest in the country. And, um, for, and, more than, and it has, for example, more patents per uh, 100,000 residents than the next six cities combined. <coughs> it's one of the fastest growing cities in the UK. Sorry, United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this combined with the March 2011 report um, to the um, East of England Development Agency about the Cambridge cluster at 50 highlighted some of the issues and that we have here. It's said that without housing multiple occupation or shared houses, people would simply not be able to live in Cambridge. Large numbers of staff who work for um, places like Adam Brooks, where your newly qualified um, doctors um, are very often in shared housing, uh, places um, like in Cambridge's high technology and biotechnology industries, which are keeping certainly Cambridge one of the forefront of um, places to live and work in the UK, would <coughs> simply not have space for their staff to, to be. The large, there is a large number um, who would be compelled to live outside of Cambridge and commuting, leading to further congestion in the area. And this isn't just about um, the high tech industries, and this isn't just about um, students. Houses of multiple occupation or shared housing is very important for social housing as well. Something people haven't um, mentioned yet is um, that those who are living above the limit for housing benefit but still cannot afford to live in this very expensive city use um, things like shared housing to be able to live near where they work. These are the people who are least able to afford to commute into Cambridge. And it's incredibly important that we make sure that these uh, low-paid workers um, stay off um, the um, job seekers' allowance. And um, it's one of the reasons that we make sure in Cambridge that a job seekers' allowance is um, growing by the least again in the entire country. I believe that um, the original motion is deeply flawed and holds very real risk into introducing caps um, for um, shared housing in Cambridge. Um, the party opposite have mentioned that said, well, maybe we won't have any caps, we just want something um, brought in to see if it's worth doing. Intru uh, introducing any caps will affect um, the percentage of uh, houses in Cambridge. You can't simply um, say, well, we'll restrict this area and then expect um, Saying that some of the beefy uh, lanes of Cambridge to suddenly um, be economically viable for a, a um, for a shared house. I, there are issues to do with housing in Cambridge and shared housing. I believe the amendment speaks to this. It has a uh, annual report dealing with the actual problems coming to uh, scrutiny committee, and it, it doesn't call for a blanket uh, approach to how we simply cap and get rid of this very important economic driver for Cambridge and the economy.